How you doing on this fine Tuesday night, folks? I'm your host, Al Sweetman. I've got some news and the like to shuffle through, so take your seats and light a fresh one. After much deliberation, the mayoral election will be going ahead this Friday, despite the assassination attempt made by an unidentified gunman last Monday, which left three injured, among them being mayoral candidate Victor Waltz. When interviewed about the incident, Waltz said, quote, He pinked me, I tell ya. It was a minor inconvenience. It will take a lot more than that to take me down. The assassin should work on his aim. He went on to say that the incident will not hinder his bout for office. Now that's just stone cold, ain't it, folks? Looks like Waltz is sizing up to be a fierce candidate for office. Again, election Friday. Get those votes in. There's been numerous troubles at McCarthy Waterfront as of late. The increase of sharks in the area has been a growing source of concern, coming way closer to the dockyards than they have in the past. Pair that with increased aggression, and you have yourself a recipe for a miserable recreational swimming activity. On top of that, there have been a couple union-related troubles, causing numerous supply chain issues. Many worker riots have broken out, and the Longshore Union leader was recently found in pieces near the McCarthy waterfront, which has done nothing but stir the angry mob. This is an ongoing development, so we'll keep you posted. And now, the weather. It's 53 degrees at the moment, and it ain't getting any warmer, so best get a warm cup of joe ready if that slight chill's getting to. Heavy showers and thunderstorms are expected to stick around long into the evening, so cozy up and keep those windows shut. Anyway, I'm sure you're through listening to me. Mother always said I made a lousy weatherman. But, fret not, folks. I got just the perfect guys for you. Here's Bob Carzer and his Cornelians with Stormy Weather.
keeps raining all the beating a man can get. Ain't you done frowning at your papers on your desk, wondering when your mind's gonna catch up? Heart tempo going down, with that thirst going unquenched? My friend, you need a bottle of Ace Cola, imbued with a strength that even the aces would have tipped their hats to. It's the finest beverage in town. So, Get those palpitations beaten. Hit that adrenaline high. Cause buddy, once that nice cold glass hits your lips and that nectar goes down your throat, life is back in your body and you'll be back on the top of your game. So, crack open that bottle and get back into the fight for your life. Ace Cola. Good work follows the pause that refreshes. Hell of a time we're living in, ain't it, Switchblade City? You're listening to Locale with Al. With me, Al Sweetman. And we're back with some late night news for you all. After last week's hefty showers, the city's been left behind the eight ball. Since it rained almost every day, there's been some flooding around the harbor district. And thanks to some collapsed pipework, a few central suburbs of the city have also been flooded. City sewage workers are on the job and repairs have been going steady, but an estimated date of repair is yet to be provided by the city council. With the upcoming weather, things are going to get a whole lot worse before they get better, so here's hoping they nip it in the bud before the end of the week. In lighter news, the Silverlight Concert Hall is gearing up for a fantastic opening of the new hit farcical comedy play, After You, written by Umberg's own Marty Kelly. The star-studded cast includes some of the Golden Tower's coolest cats, including Timothy Rex as con man Hugo First and Jack Shanahan as Undertaker Tom Blackwell. Critics who've seen previews of the show call it an absolute riot, so, fellas, grab a broad and take the night off. You've earned it. After You opens Saturday, so be sure to get those tickets fast. They ain't gonna last. And finally, there's been a fire at the Singleton Clothing Factory. The whole block's been turned into a black spot and has caused some serious damage to the local area. Local UPD fire response units are still battling the blaze, so no body count just yet. We'll keep you posted. Locale with Al is brought to you tonight by Moonlight Smokes. Moonlight Smokes. Bold and smooth. Find them on the top shelf of your local tobacconist. And now, another track from Al's old stash. Now, this one's a personal favorite of mine. It's one of those songs that really connects with you. Like an old friend telling you a story you couldn't remember. Enjoy the sweet and heartwarming tones of Linda Lee in a stunning rendition of Fancy Meeting You.
lyric man. The dawn broke, and like two lovesick fish in the sea, we awoke, and love climbed up our family tree. When hearts are true, what the thousand years were true, it paid to wait for old man fate to lead us out of the zoo. It all goes to prove what downright love can do. Hello world, I'm Marvin, Marv for short, and today I have a question for you. When you meet a new person these days, what's the first thing you take note of? Is it their looks? Is it their attitude? You may think it's one or all of the above. Let me tell you what you really see. The secret is dress. From the hats they wear to the shoes they bear, every article of the clothing on their back has informed that first impression, whether you like it or not. And that's where we come in. Marv's everyday apparel is set on ensuring you master the art of that first impression. Tell the world you're worthy of respect. Give troublemakers a clear warning that you mean business. And relish in the side effect of comfortable snug clothing that'll protect you from the elements. Because when you want to look distinctly you, head on over to Marv's everyday apparel. Located on the corner of Forest Street and Clapton Avenue, downtown. Hope you were all keeping well while old Al was gone, because I've got plenty more news for you all tonight. There's always something happening in Switchblade City. Mary Caldwell has been slated to feature in a starring role in the new Henry Ambrose flick, In Pursuit of Violence. However, production has been seemingly stalled at Studio SKO, leaving the film in production limbo. If you're asking why it's stalled, well, that's above my pay grade. Some tips say Caldwell has something to do with it, but that's about all I got for you. Sorry to the fans out there I'm leaving hanging, but we'll keep you posted. The Umberg Zoo has recently received a generous donation from the Benedetto family, with Don Atori Benedetto taking an interest in bolstering the upkeep of the joint. This comes after an incident last month, when an elephant escaped and rampaged down Hawthorne Street, knocking over a newspaper stand, trampling three poor schmucks who were just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and turning one poor sucker into sidewalk taste. Hopefully with a bit more moolah in their pockets, they can afford some tougher bars. And finally, there has been a mass public demand for higher UPD presence in what has colloquially been coined the blade. 
a part of east side Umberg that has seen a skyrocket in both crime rate and poverty. The increase in gang violence in the area has resulted in the destruction of many local businesses. And even the odd apartment block or two has seen its landlords out on their hides. The UPD has yet to make an official statement in regards to tackling any of the issues listed above, but hopefully they just have their hands full with other cases. And that wouldn't be a shock to anyone. Now, would it? Now, folks, I have a confession. Locale with Al likes to keep our tunes varied, but I just can't get the beautiful voice of Linda Lee out of my head. And if our tastes are anything alike, I bet that neither can you. So, at the risk of being a bit repetitive, we're going to be playing another track from the fine dame. From Miss Lee, here's I Can't Escape From You. <laughs> A true gentleman has to adapt to a life in Hamburg. Chivalry from your fellow man is no longer the guarantee it once was. Now, of course, you could acquire an automobile for that extra guarantee of a safe street traversal, but alas, it is no longer the rare sight it once was. When you're driving any old scrap heap, you're just as vulnerable as any other fellow. But... 
When you drive with the Paragon Motor Company, you're a cut above the rest. Goons will scatter at the first sight of those piercing beams from your headlights. Your horn will send them scattering like seagulls at a foghorn. And the roar of that engine is enough to put the fear of God back into a man. Because when you drive with Paragon, you drive with purpose. Morning, Switchblade City. It's time to rise and shine. Locale with Al would like to apologize for having to interrupt your morning routines with some breaking and unfortunate news. Former esteemed crime-fighting hero and mayor-in-waiting, Victor J. Waltz, was assassinated at his home late last night. According to the boys on the scene, the current theory is that an unknown assailant had managed to slink his way into the residence under the cover of night, dispatching of everyone present within the Waltz household. Aside from the man himself, his armored bodyguards have also been added to the numbers of bodies found. The scene was uncovered by a maid in the early hours of the morning, who swiftly contacted the authorities. One officer on duty offered his insight into the scene that greeted them. Quote, In all my years in law enforcement, I've never seen anything like this. A suspect has been near impossible to identify at this time, but rest assured, folks, Switchblade's finest are on the job. No further details have been provided to the press at this time, but authorities do believe the case to be linked to the attempt made on Waltz's life last week. We'll update you if we hear anything more. There has been no comment from Mrs. Waltz nor her son, as both are currently in Europe on holiday. Authorities have sent a telegram to keep them in the loop, and to ensure their arrival back home is safe and sound. Lionel McConnell, Waltz's opponent in the land of politics, has expressed his sincerest sympathies, publicly condemning whoever was responsible. With his competition in the ground, McConnell is expected to be taken the mayoral seat within the coming weeks. Lucky for him. Now, folks, in times such as these, it's easy to stay down in the dumps. It's tough news but it's got to be broken. We're all feeling it. And together, we can put on our Sunday best and see it through till tomorrow. From the Billy Arts Orchestra, I'm all dressed up with a broken heart.
with your host, Al Sweetman. It's been a rough week, folks, but the bad news just keeps on coming. You know what they say, when it rains, it pours. Chaos erupts throughout the lower city. A series of violent riots occurred last night, with businesses being bombed, looted, and burned. Accompanying all that, many citizens were found in the crosshairs of the perpetrators, resulting in many an assault across the city. Areas affected include the Crimson Court, West Hill, and both the Filcher and Briar Streets. The focal point of this chaos could be identified as Nightingale Street, where multiple targeted assaults and homicides took place. Norman Oakwood, aged 18, employee of Bud Street Comics, was identified as one of the targeted victims. Officers Robert Finch and Joe McCarney, who were not responding but on duty, were found dead at the scene at Zippy's Donut House. Additionally, a few tenants of the Royal Arms apartment block were added to the body count. These additions included Jack and Mary Stansfeld, found dead in their flat, and 40-year-old local Michael Thane, was believed to have died in a possible gas explosion a few doors down. Whether it was part of the attacks or just a grim coincidence is up in the air. There's still a lot of smoke around why all this happened, so we'll keep you posted when we next hear. That ain't all that went amuck last night. Elsewhere, there was a lot of commotion at the McCarthy waterfront. Gunfire rang out across the docks as a firefight broke out, with multiple casualties. Authorities are requesting any information from the locals regarding the involved parties. On top of that, a cargo ship had its contents stolen, which happened to include some illegal firearms, so I anticipate the fuss is only going to get worse. The first mate of the ship, a young Alan McClinsky, was found murdered on board, his captain nowhere to be found. And he ain't the only one up in smoke. A Dr. Stephen Brownstone, a marine biologist who was reportedly in the area at the time, has also gone missing. He was looking into the influx of shark attacks over the last few weeks, hoping to assist in bringing an end to it. Seems some folks just don't want things getting any better for us, eh, Switchblade City? In other news, tragedy hits the tracks, as a train near the waterfront struck a vehicle that was attempting to cross. The car was obliterated. Its passengers killed nearly instantly upon impact. The locomotive, on the other hand, survived the clash, suffering some minor damage whilst keeping its cargo and passengers shaken but intact. Surprisingly, authorities believe the incident to be connected to mob activity in the area. But other than that, they still have very little to say in terms of detail. The sun may be out, but the news is all stormy weather. It ain't unreasonable for folks to want things to get better. We're all getting real sick of the cold. Good thing we have Walter Davison's Louisville Lou to ask for change on our behalf. From Al's old stash, give me a little bit of sunshine.
When clothes are down in the dumps of unkemptness and dirtiness, it's vital that we use a proper soap to scrub out all the nastiness of the day to day. Worry not, folks. Happy Harold has arrived, and this happy clown has just the soap for you. Happy Clown Laundry Soap is made of the happiest of natural ingredients. No snake oil will be touching those well-pressed shirts of yours. In fact, Happy Clown Laundry Soap is scientifically proven to be 90% purer than any other cake of soap on the Umberg market. And that pureness shines through in its efficiency. Food smears, wine spills, ketchup, sweat, oil, grease, blood, you name it. And Happy Clown's Laundry Soap can mop it and drop it in mere seconds. So, the next time you find yourself in need of a laundry soap that you can lean on, trust none other than the Happy Clown and his Happy Laundry Soap. Welcome back, Switchblade City. You're listening to Locale with Al. We're thrilled to have you back with us. Uncomfortable time for baseball this week. A series of interesting events took place at the Stambaugh Stadium yesterday as the Umberg Strikers went head-to-head with the Mayville Beavers. The stadium was packed head-to-toe, with crowds drawn from all over by their famous five-cent beer day. That's right, folks. Five cents for all the beer you could drink. Both fans of the Strikers and the Beavers, having indulged in their fair share of alcoholic elation, were very enthusiastic in cheering on their respective teams. Maybe a little too enthusiastic. A woman reportedly flashed her breasts to the umpire, his face going as cherry pie red as his cards. A naked man made his way onto the field, stealing one of the bases, to the cheers of his compatriots and the boos of the opposition. The Beavers' first baseman was given an Umberg welcome and had 50 pounds of hot dogs thrown at him. And the coach of the Beavers was similarly initiated with a beer mug to the head. By the ninth inning, the Umberg strikers had secured a tie for the game. This is when things really escalated. Sources say a man, encouraged by liquid courage, stumbled onto the field and struggled with the strikers' outfielder, attempting to steal his hat. The strikers came to their teammates' aid with bats in hand. That's when the stadium erupted into chaos, as drunken Beavers fans stormed the pitch, armed to the teeth with broken beer bottles, knives, and rocks. Both baseball teams, Beavers and Strikers, worked together to fend off the horde of drunken hooligans with their bats. The game was forfeited to Mayville just as vice cops arrived on the scene to disperse the crowd with tear gas and billy clubs. We have a caller on the line who says he was on the field during the kerfuffle. Hey, up, Pally. You're on the air. Hey, Al Sweetman. Big fan. Pleasure to be on. Great to have you with us, pal. So, what's your story, Morning Glory? Why don't you tell us about what you saw? Oh, where to begin? I was togged to the bricks. I ain't one for suits, but a stadium with the strikers playing? Gotta wear your Sunday best, at least in my household. I tell you, Al, the game was all wet. Ever since Billy Flynn was off the team, the Strikers just ain't been the same. All our Strikers fans were in a rotten mood. (laughs) Good thing that beer deal was on. (laughs) Don't know if anyone would have shown up otherwise. Uh Uh-huh. How about you tell us all about the fight? How did it start? I'm gonna be honest with you, Al. That fuss was the most ring-a-ding-ding of a time anyone had all day. I confess, of the lot, I wasn't the most, uh, well-behaved. I may have encouraged it. A little. Hmm. Elaborate on that. Well, there was this guy. Beavis fan. Pals with the guy who waltzed under the pitch. It was in a group, they was. Anyway, he was a real wise guy. As soon as his pal climbed the railing, obviously, I started kicking up a fuss. The strikers were on the up, for Christ's sakes. They might have turned the game around. Unfair for one of those suckers to up and ruin it. Anyway, and this wise guy pal of his, he says, Hey, settle down, bozo. So I turns to him, and I says, Who you calling bozo? He moseys right up to my face, sloshed out of his mind. And he says, Ain't you got a circus to be at? Where's the red nose and makeup, bozo? <laughs> right 
to my face. Ouch. I take it you weren't a fan of that. You're damn right I wasn't. I may have been dressed up all nice and that, but I'm still plenty rugged, I tells ya. I don't take squat from no big it. So, I punched that twitch straight in the busu. <laughs> one I saw his soul leave his body the way his eyes rolled. That's an understandable response. And what happened after that? Well, he hit the floor like a sack of potatoes, and he was out for the count. Yeah, but the boys he was with weren't having none of it. They jumped me on the spot. Pretty soon, I was pulling, punching, yanking, and biting whatever I could get a hold of. Pretty sure I managed to get an ear off of someone. <laughs> Even managed to get a straight tooth or two from the Beaver Boys. Oh, oh. oh I still got him in my pocket now. Well, hey. At least you got some souvenirs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Would have liked a striker's win, too, though. Ah, shame about that Billy, huh? Yeah. Shame about that Billy. All right, well, thanks for calling in, pal, but we've got to get on with the rest of the show. You take care, and have a good night. Hoping your weekend's brawl free. You and me both, Al. <laughs> hey, you have a good one. <laughs> Jeez. Hell of a mess for the UPD. You know, folks, I remember the good old days when rowdiness was something you kept indoors and out of the public eye. And I'm sure, after hearing all that, you folks are missing it too. Never was a college boy. Mother said I would have been wasting their time. Had a face more for radio than the classroom and all that. <laughs> Guess she was right. Still, I was known to shake up a party or two, and those are some real fond memories. So, folks, let's reminisce together. From the hometowners, here's College Days. <laughs> Never go to bed till late. That's what we're learning now at college. Rah, rah, rah. Ginger ale and alcohol makes a drink of block and fall. That's what we're learning now at college. Arithmetic is one thing that we don't know much about. No, but a little girlish figure you can always figure out. Cause one and one is always two. But more than two will never do. That's what we're learning now at college. Rah, rah. <laughs> Mickey, 
I'm just out with the pals, just having a good time, when all of a sudden... Excuse me, sir. Is that an exposed firearm on your person? Yeah. All right, pal. You're under arrest. Oh, I ought to dial Mickey. Hey, I'm Mickey Roswell. Did you know that you have rights? Constitution says you do, and so do I. I believe that until proven guilty, every single man, woman, and child in this city is e no sin. And that is why I fight for you, Switchblade City. Mickey Roswell, attorney at law. Mickey makes them pay. Dial Mickey at telephone 35087. Long week, eh, Switchblade City? This is your host, Al Sweetman. Did you miss me? I sure as hell missed you. Hope your evening's been a quiet one. I've got some more news for you. Update on the Waltz case. Seems there's just no breaks for the Waltz estate, as once again, foul play has reared its ugly mug within. Two of the UPD boys on duty were killed while watching over the Archibald Heights home. Stranger yet, several wounded suspects were found littered throughout the estate, disguised as police officers. It appears they were attempting to enter the home to picket what ill-gotten gains they could. All suspects were hospitalized. Any that recover are expected to be taken in for questioning. The police have confirmed multiple suspects have strong criminal backgrounds, with a particularly common factor being street gang relations. Why they were injured, or how these suspects were able to acquire UPD uniforms and buzzers, at this time, is unknown. Police are still very hushed on the details. So, again, and I know you're getting real sick of hearing it, we'll update you when we hear something. Local government officials have finally put forward a bill with plans to destroy the old Cutter's Bridge, the sole entrance to Cutter's Penitentiary. The idea has been popular among elected officials and vice representatives and is expected to be voted upon once a new mayor takes office. The plans include complete destruction of the bridge and the implementation of a ferry in its place to lessen the effectiveness of breakouts and disincentivize riots. It is recommended that citizens write to their local officials to make their support, or opposition, heard in the matter. Locale with Al is brought to you today by Devil's Bite Matches. There's always a flame to be lit. Find them at your local tobacconist, convenience store, or damn near anywhere. And now, another track from Al's old stash. Now this one I haven't dusted off for a while. Let's light up the old record and breathe it in. From the Bobby Byrne Orchestra, one cigarette for two. I wouldn't know All I remember is the 
the glow of one cigarette or two. Each little puff I measure, watching the light descend. Each little puff I treasure, down to the very end. I got a thrill at you. And does the memory linger yet Of lips that lingered where they met On one cigarette or two issues behind the scenes of In the Pursuit of Violence. The picture, helmed by director Henry Ambrose, was slated to release this year, but it looks like that won't be happening, owing to a large share of production problems. Studio SKO has begrudgingly delayed the film's release by another three months, and no one's happy about it. Many fans of the director have written in, voicing their particularly violent displeasure with the constant delays demanding the film's release after its excessive three years of production. Don't think it'll be worth releasing just yet, folks, as it looks like there's still a lot of work that needs doing. Famed screenwriter Monk Josevich has been booted from the project, allegedly due to some rampant alcoholism. Richard Scrud, at the behest of the producers, will be picking up the reins. Fans of his previous project, a comedy west titled Death Rides a Donkey, will be thrilled to see him attached to a more serious project. But production troubles don't stop with the script. Once again, Mary Caldwell's behavior on set is brought into focus. The actress, known for roles as Sister Mildred in Dance at Whitechapel, and her award-winning turn as the Pirate Queen in In the Hands of Doom, has been temporarily suspended from the set due to what production members have deemed callous behavior. Reports of her spitting on production staff and locking heads with Mr. Ambrose on set rank among the prime reasons for the suspension. Rumors have it that Miss Caldwell has acquired a taste for cocaine, this suspicion accompanied by numerous stories of affairs with men of all stations within the studio. Again, these are merely rumors, but they ain't helping production one bit. The cherry on top of this disastrous Sunday is Mr. Ambrose's reaction to all this fuss. He has taken to locking himself in his trailer when not working, even going so far as to take pot shots at any inquisitive souls asking about the film's production. Oh, jeez. Not looking good. Well, while there's trouble at the pictures, the radio's still here, and we got more than just news. We got tracks. So, Harry, I say we get another one lined up for the fine folks still listening in. From the Emil Coleman Orchestra, here's Be Careful, Young Lady.
hot I own. Be careful, young lady. You're stepping in a danger zone. Your eyes are saying things I know are indiscreet. Why start in playing games you wouldn't dare complete? Be careful, young lady. The moon is treacherous and bright. I'm warning you, lady. I'm not responsible tonight. Look out where you're heading. It's slippery ground you're treading. Be careful, young lady. Before it's too late. Switchblade City, you just keep gazing up at those stars in the sky, and old Al will fill you in one last time for the night. With the city still in the death throes of bankruptcy, the various crime-ridden slums on the east side of town have been a growing concern for law-abiding citizens. Block after block of run-down, dilapidated tenements are an eyesore for residents, and, more concerningly, a breeding ground for criminals to get their taste for a life of wrongdoing. Townsfolk have been putting their heads together to figure out an answer to the golden question. What can be done about it? Local statistics show that many mills and factories have been shut down over the past decade, leading to mass unemployment and layoffs. As a result, many folks have moved on to greener pastures, leaving these neighborhoods to rot behind them. Even landlords have adopted self-destructive arson as a tool of survival and have taken Molotov cocktails to their own properties, running off with the insurance money in tow. There may be hope in sight, as Paradise Industries is rumored to be picking up the slack of the city's bankruptcy and is possibly planning to enter talks about redevelopment of bygone neighborhoods. Paradise Industries is known for putting their money where their mouth is and is widely credited for the construction of the Golden Tower, funding many businesses throughout the city. Now, it's all fine and dandy to be excited about this prospect. I, for one, would love to see this town get a new coat of paint. But I'll believe it when I see it. And that's the news. I'm glad the weather's been clearing up these last few days. 
makes the drive home all the more pleasant when I can see that beautiful moon in the sky, telling us all that it's going to be all right. But don't just take it from me. This is Al Sweetman signing off and leaving you in the warm embrace of Tom Klein's and his music. Now playing I Love the Moon.